Paul. I'm Lata Venkatesh with me as Sunesh Anoy and Anuj Singhal. Uh, well, you could look at the early morning queues from Asia and they don't look very, very exciting. Uh, at this point in time, a little bit of red is what we've got, but uh, uh, you know, the day can turn out pretty badly as it did yesterday for us. So really today, perhaps domestic queues will slightly outweigh global queues uh, because we are falling uh, in our own momentum as it were. We are uh, uh, falling more than other markets and uh, Varendar helpfully gave me some comparable data with uh, other Asia-Pacific uh, markets and even now our valuations stand much taller. To be fair, our earnings growth is a little better but uh, these look like earnings growth that haven't yet been scaled down. They still stand at 18%. So if we scale down, perhaps uh, our valuations will look even taller. Yeah. So uh, uh, the last of the fall perhaps is not behind us. But more importantly, it's the momentum of the fall that is uh, yeah. a little scary. And uh, there, I guess, uh, technicals are going to matter uh, a little more than just fundamentals. Oh, yes, for sure. And uh, we'll, of course, discuss that in a greater detail. Lata, hi, morning. Anuj, morning. You know, Lata, yesterday, Anuj and I were at the Motila Loswal mm. conference. And after a really long time, we found that the mood has started to get very cautious now. I mean, in the last one year, we've covered so many conferences, mm. but the mood was quite buoyant. In this conference now, people don't know where this market could be headed, perhaps because of the global cues and the fact that, you know, nobody can judge where the next no, move is I coming from. In the past one year, you never met people who had seen a 20% fall in shares in the past, in just four months. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the mood in March and look at the mood now. Yeah. Uh, you, all your investor conferences uh, that you attended were before June. And at that time, you know, from 9,000 highs, it looked like, okay, we can give up 5%, we can give up 7%, but now we have given up over 20%. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not surprised that people are questioning the buy on rallies entirely altogether. Yes, and now, you know, the problem is that there's been a bit of a buyer strike in the market, more than a uh, large selling. I mean, even if you look at the numbers yesterday, yes, FIIs have sold, but not sold as much. I mean, it's an 800 crore sell figure that we got, but now we're not getting enough support from DIIs. So that, I think, is something that would worry the street. So domestic institutions have bought about, what, 500 crores in the cash market yesterday. And that's the point someone was making at the conference yesterday as well, that even LIC is not coming into the market now and you know supporting the market with buys so perhaps that's something that one could be concerned about but Anuj morning you know we were discussing this yesterday how not just is the nifty in bear market terrain but so many individual large cap and quality mid cap stocks are in yeah. bear markets so the fall yesterday was pretty crunching it was uh, Sonia morning uh, you know yesterday was a bad day you yeah. you cannot mask it uh, and I think more than the second half, the first half was equally bad yesterday, yeah. even though the, the index was masking it. Because throughout the first half, first half of yesterday, the mid-cap index was down so much and a lot of stocks were falling. The big question for me is, this: is this still a bull market correction or is this a bear market? Yeah. Answer to that will be known in hindsight, of course. Uh, and right now, none of us uh, have that foresight, which is 2020. So we'll have to wait for the evidence of the next three months to say. But, you know, you're now reaching a stage where Brokerages are downgrading stocks which have already fallen so much. Every morning, you know, you are not getting any buy ideas now. You're getting sell ideas, neutral ideas, or, you know, revising price targets downwards. Sometimes that's the start of the bottoming out process. The problem for the market is whether it's in a bull market correction or in a bear market, or more importantly, in a bull market correction, the bottoming out process is quite painful. And it yeah. takes a lot of damage on individual stocks. Uh, and, you know, for example, yesterday, uh, the, look at the gross numbers from FIs uh, in terms of gross buy and gross sell, hardly anything. As you said, more of a seller strike. Uh, buyer ba strike. You more mean. of a buyer strike, sorry. Yeah. Barring an ICICI bank which fell 3% and that too with only delivery volumes of 250 crore, no other stock had major delivery based uh, selling. And actually it got compensated by some decent buy figure in HDFC. In HDFC. Yes. So it's not really... Uh, exactly. There was some selling in index futures though, about uh, you know 1,000 uh, crores and there they continue to add short positions, 38,000 fresh shots were added. And in the option side, both calls and puts were sold, so maybe the market could be approaching a bit of a sanity Agent. phase. That could happen, but as of now, this is still a sell on rally market. Now the problem for this market, you know, I don't want to discuss internals too much right now, I want to discuss what you should do in this market. The problem in this market is not to make a call on the stocks which have fallen the most and how much they have fallen. I'll just give you one example of a stock like Mothers and Sumi, for example. Now Mothers and Sumi, you could argue, has fallen from 400 to 275, but just rewind the clock back two years, it was at 50 rupees. 
so 50 became 400 now you know you could you could say that 50 became 275 not 400 became 275 so it would be folly to think you know that okay it's just because the stock has fallen 25 30 percent it's a great buying opportunity i mean if a tata motors can fall 50 percent what prevents mothers and Sony from falling 50 percent so uh, in in stock markets price damage at times can really baffle you and that's something that you should, should be prepared for the, the limited point i want to make right now is that maybe time has come now to only look at the index stocks quality index stocks and maybe deploy about 10 to 20 percent that you know i've been saying for last one month now that the best position is cash stay on cash mm -hmm. and you would get at least market beating returns that's something that you know a lot of people would have got now maybe you are reaching a stage where you can deploy some of that cash but only 10 to 20 percent not more than that when do you deploy the next 10 to 20 percent in Two scenarios a either if the nifty goes to 7200 because if it's still a bull market correction it would end somewhere around 7000 to 7200 and you won't get the exact bottom so then you deploy another 20 percent or you deploy another 20 percent if the market gives you a big bounce and doesn't stop at 8100 8200 crosses the previous high of 8650 the previous resistance market crosses that because then it would be back to a big bull market and then it won't stop at 9100 then you deploy the other 20 percent or 30 percent and then you participate in this market uh, because you know who will make most money who would have kept his powder dry and would have waited for stock prices to correct to below fair value or reasonable valuation to buy some of the stocks have already entered there maybe some of the private banks have already entered there maybe some of the oil stocks have already entered there so this is the time to get there the problem for this market is not to dabble into mid caps because even now the nifty junior is up one percent year to date the nifty is down nine percent the mid cap index is only down two percent if this is you know there's still a risk if this is a bit of a bear market in this case mid cap index won't stop here in this case the mid cap index would fall another 30 40 percent from here individual stocks could fall 50 60 percent from here we've seen that in the past mm -hmm. so that's one risk you don't make because that could damage your portfolios you know beyond a point and that is something you should stay out with right now is the time to look at only index stocks quality index stocks and chances that you know you won't go you won't go horribly wrong there. You, you can still go wrong. Hmm. You can still see mark-to-market losses, but you won't go horribly wrong. Okay. <clears throat> at the, and for once, we have to look at macroeconomic data that comes globally. I mean, these cues are global. What has broken down between June and now is our total idea of global growth. It was never expected to be gung-ho, but uh, people were still expecting that we will manage with probably a 3% global growth, uh, the, the numbers that uh, the IMF puts out between 3 and 3.5. Three and but this year, it looks like it's going to be revised much lower. The yeah. latest numbers that are coming from Japan have indicated that the contraction uh, uh, of that economy continues. Uh, maybe Europe is slightly on a better footing, but we are going to get perhaps nastier numbers from mm. China as well. So, you know... For once, we have to look at the macroeconomic numbers and those, I think, uh, uh, some numbers we will get from IMF in October. That is when they make their annual revision of global growth numbers. So we still have a little bit of a distance to go before the global bad news is out. And, uh, you know, once again, you will see central bankers starting to say things like whatever it takes. And then I guess the markets will start clutching its straws. Well, uh, let's wait for that to happen. But Anuj, you know, you were talking about how to approach this market now. I take your point about people who have their powder dry and have yes. the ability to deploy. But what about those retail investors who've already put in their money through the course of the last one year and don't have any fresh money to put in and are sitting on losses in, in these individual mid-caps? Yes. Even if you look at a churn, at this point, you know, even sectors like pharma are starting to fall. So where do you find, uh, not even a safe haven, where do you look for in the next Let's next uh, round of the upside? Yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's a tough one and that's a real tough one. Uh, you know, in stock markets, you book your losses and you rent, let your profits run. Simple strategy. And if this market is falling, in that case, the folly would be to say, okay, my mid cap has already fallen 30%, why get out now? Get out now, you mm -hmm. know, and at least save that 70% of whatever is there and invest in maybe the, the comfort of large caps because at least, you know, then your capital would be preserved from falling further here. Just because the stock has fallen 30% doesn't, doesn't mean it can't, can't fall more. Further. You remember the, the examples of Unitech. Uh, in the last bear market, Unitech stock fell 80%. Then people said, okay, now it's fallen 80%. How much more can it fall? It became it half from there. So it <laughs> yeah. fell 90%. 
it's fallen 90%. How much can it fall further? What's the definition of a stock that falls 95%? Is a stock that falls 90% no, and but then there's becomes a, But half. there's a different argument there, right? You're talking about a stock like Unitech that is besieged with problems. But here we're talking about quality companies who are just correcting because of the market sentiment. Six months back, uh, what would you have said about MTech Auto? Uh, would you have, would you have no, thought that this is course, a stock which could, which could see these kind of problems? Ten years back, could you say the same thing about Unitech? It was an index stock, uh, for, you know, for, mm. for Christ's sake. So clearly, you know, th that's the problem with, with the mid-caps, you know. The, you the never know where the next landmine will where, come where, from. Where yeah. you're going, you know, once the stock starts to fall, you never know where it is going. So at least with an ICICI bank, with an HDFC bank, you know that, okay, the stock can fall 30-40%. Look, even in the last bear market, ICICI bank and HDFC bank did fall 30-40%. But in the next bull market, they made new highs yeah. and higher highs than the previous highs. At least that's something that you know. You know, you can you can say with fair degree of certainty that 10 years from now, ICICI bank and HDFC bank would be higher than what they are right now. Mm. You can't say the same thing about a Madhus and Sumi or maybe, you know, even some of the, the rank mid-cap, maybe Suzlon, something like that. You can't say the same thing about some of these stuff. So 10 years, one can still perhaps take a lot of uh, bets, but the point is patience doesn't run 10 years. Wisdom run, doesn't run for 10 years. It's not as if there will be a whole lot of uh, retail investors who will still take out money from the market just yet. I think the first blow for the market will come when the SIP stop and the yes. DIIs don't get money. Mm -hmm. And the next problem will come when they actually come and redeem. My sense is that the redemption is perhaps to be reserved for 2016. God willing, it need not be that bad. But I think the immediate problem that DIIs are going to face is, why should I put my exactly. next SIP? Because yes. the last SIPs exactly. or the last one year Have SIPs made any money. are now in the red. Yes. That is more likely how the retailer will think. I don't think the entire mass of retailers are going and trading stocks every day and buying no, the BHLs and Mother Sansumi. In fact, they are a smaller these, lot. You know, these these the are the queries lot that we get on Twitter that you you guys keep talking about where when to put the fresh round of money but what about people who have already invested so much in this last one year and don't have any fresh money to put in what do they, well, do? they would have it would yeah. be the usual SIPs you know that yeah. uh, monthly savings that you're setting aside your 10,000 your 5,000 yeah. your 15,000 but that's precious and when you see the when NAVs see the fall falling. so badly uh, you know the, you can you can tolerate a three-month NAV but a one-year NAV is something you will not be able to withstand and that is when you know the fresh SIPs may stop coming that is when you should not be stopping the fresh SIPs uh, mm. but uh, that's where uh, the DIS could run out of cash and then we could be in for bigger trouble but I think we are getting ahead of the problem let's wait and see <laughs> uh, I'm more really worried about the global peace uh, the yes. breakdown of Indian growth story is coming from global queues. I mean, Shankar Sharma was damn right. If we think we can grow, you know, 7%, 8% at a time when the world is in, uh, you know, contraction mode, when growth is so scarce, then I think, uh, you know, we are living in a fool's paradise. It's, it's really going to catch up and reduce our earnings numbers. So we have to wait for those global macro numbers now. All right, right on cue, I guess. The China data is looking quite weak on your screen, as you can Ooh. see. But uh, both imports and exports are down. So August imports down almost 15%. And exports are down almost about six odd percent, and the Chinese market is doing what it does best, moving downwards. But here's what you'll get to see on the show. Just to give the comparison, the exports, the imports were expected to fall by six percent, and they have fallen by fourteen percent. So you know that's a measure of the disappointment that the market will now discount. All right, we'll talk about all this and more in the next two and a half hours, but here's what you'll get to see on the show this morning. Bears were all over the Lal Street on Monday as the Sensex slumped to its lowest level in 15 months and the Nifty dropped below 7,600. Nandita Parker of Karma Capital tells us how much more pain there is in store and, of course, what you should be doing at this juncture. China remains in focus as data shows that the country's foreign exchange reserves have fallen by $93.9 billion in August. Mark Matthews of Bank Julius Bayer will track all the global market action for us. Shilpa Kumar of ICICI 